Hi everyone, my name's Lauren, and with social distancing and quarantine going on, I've been spending a lot more time in my room than usual. It has become my office, my home gym, where I eat, where I sleep, where I relax, just everything is basically in my room. And because I'm spending so much time in here, it has gotten quite messy. Also, now that I'm home, I'm reaching for some things I don't normally reach for, or I have a lot more stuff that I don't normally keep out, so it's gotten quite a bit unorganized. So today, that's what I'm going to tackle. I'm going to clean my room and organize all the spots that I have let get a disaster. Also, I'll be calling on Good Housekeeping's own Queen of Clean, Carolyn Forte, for all her tips and tricks, because the bedroom, while there doesn't seem like there's that much to clean, I'm sure there's things I'm missing and would love her advice. So let's get started. So I figured I'd just start by showing you the current state of my room. Yes, it's very messy. I blame it on being in here pretty much 24 seven with not having anywhere to go. Also, normally I do make my bed, but since I'm gonna be changing my sheets, I didn't do that. So this is our starting point. Let's get started. Now, when cleaning my room, I like to start with the bed. I feel like because it takes up the most space and is the main focal point of the room, once my bed is clean, everything else feels a whole lot cleaner. So I started by stripping my bed since it was definitely time to change my sheets. Now, normally I'm kind of guilty of just kind of changing my sheets when I think they're dirty and not so much keeping a regular schedule. So I reached out to our cleaning expert, Carolyn Forte, to find out exactly how often we should be washing our bedding. We recommend that, you know, it's best to change your bedding once a week. So that's the sheets and the pillowcases. Um, you know, even if you take a shower at night, I mean, it's better than taking one in the morning because you're not going into the bed, you know, with the day's dirt on top of you. But, um, but you know, you sweat at night and skin cells and all kinds of things can, can be deposited. So you really should clean your, your sheets and pillowcases once a week. Some of the other bedding, you can obviously wait, you know, if it's comforters or pillows, maybe, you know, Three, every three to four months because, um, you know, they trap dust. And if you, I don't know, if you eat in bed or your pets lay on them, you know, those kinds of things, those are always going to make them even need cleaning more frequently. Also, while I was talking to Carolyn, I asked her, what are some of the commonly missed and easily forgotten about spots? The biggest problem in the bedroom is dust. Mm -hmm. So, you know, dust that settles on furniture that you can see, but it's the stuff behind the bed and under the bed and, um, you know, behind the furniture that you don't see. So, um, what I try to do is, is, you know, several times a year, pull things away from the walls and go back there with my vacuum cleaner and get, kind of get in the nooks and the crannies um, because you want you want the air to be clean. You want to be able to relax. So, um, you know, if you're keeping your bed clean, you need to keep the room clean, too. So think about the blinds and the, the window treatments, um, you know, the carpet, places that dust settles that you might not automatically see. It's easy to do the traffic lanes and right around the bed and, you know, and go but um, you do need to pay attention to those hidden spots once in a while too. I actually have two sets of matching sheets, so I'm just going to wash the dirty set the next time I do laundry, and for now, put the clean set on that I have. Now, when it comes to making the bed, growing up, my mom always made the bed with these nicely folded hospital corners, and I've just never been able to figure it out, no matter how many times she teaches me. But today I was determined to figure it out instead of just tucking the sheets under the bed messily like I sometimes do. So I FaceTime my mom and hope that she could teach me. I'm making my bed. I need, how do you do your corners? Oh, okay. Put your hand first. Put your hand back. Alright. Hold it up. Hold that up. Hold that up. Hold that up. Hold that up. Kind of like slide up maybe. I'm thinking to the bed. To the bed. Now hold the sheet and... <laughs> Down. This is gonna be impossible, man. Kind of go. No. 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 Don't fold it. Just tuck all this in. But there's a nicer way of doing it. But how is the nice way to do it? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I move that like this. No. What? No. Where? No, 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 no. I'm gonna show you on my bed. Hold this. So it makes it at, at the angle there. Yeah. And just it just makes it out of the way. Yeah. Like, okay. Tuck. And then you tuck. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. I think so. Then this. Then this comes down, and it looks like this. It's pretty good. Okay. Then look where my hand. You can go like this. Oh, there's more. No. Okay. And then go like maybe. Okay. Like down. Is it supposed to be like angled like this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Angled perfect. Okay. Perfect. 
And then go down along the bed. Right, and then go down the bed. Like this? Yes, perfect. Okay, I'm doing like, it! Yeah, Yay! Okay. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's see if I can do it on the other side. Now that I figured it out on the one side, it was actually super easy to redo on the other side. So I just finished making up my bed. Then I put the comforter on top, and I like to make sure that the sides are even and it's not too long or too short on either side. Then I just push my bed in back where it belongs and I put my pillows in some clean pillowcases and then I put on all of my decorative pillows and blankets. Finishing out Carolyn's tips for Miss Spots, I just gave my blinds a quick wipe down. I just turned them flat both ways, forward and back, and carefully wiped them down with some paper towels and a little bit of multi-purpose cleaner. Next up I moved to my nightstand. Now I don't have a typical nightside table, instead I have this shelf that's kind of built in and is actually on top of the heater, but I use this shelf as my nightside table and it works great. I started by taking everything off of the shelf and wiping it down with a multi-purpose cleaner to get any of the dust that's built up. Then I put everything back in its place and wiped down any objects that may have gotten some dust built up on them. Then I vacuumed the rest of the floor next to my bed and pulled off the heater door thing to get some of the dust that I noticed was under the heater, but then I realized how dirty the heater cover itself was, so I just tried my best to wipe it down with the microfiber towel and some multi-purpose cleaner. Then I just put it back in its spot and made sure to vacuum the floor and this little rug that I have. So in my room on my nightstand, I have a humidifier and on my desk, I have an oil diffuser. Now I know these two things are very important to keep clean because once they're dirty, that dirt will then go into the air you breathe, which is not good. But I wanted to make sure that I was cleaning these correctly. So I asked Carolyn for some tips. Um, you know, you should always look, every, every humidifier is different, honestly. So it's hard to come generalization. So you really do need to check your particular manual for your brand. You know, it's easy for, for water to get trapped and for mold to grow. So it just, you know, however you clean them, it's important to clean them. If you have one with one of those paper wicks that you can't clean, that needs to be thrown away and replaced, but take it apart. Most of them come apart pretty easily. Empty the water tank, you know, make sure you clean them out well. Um, warm sudsy water is the best way to go. You can um, even fill the bottom or the base with a bleach and water solution. Same thing with the, with the container. Let it sit for a little while to just sanitize that um, and then give it a good rinse. Get in, If you've got any buildup of hard water minerals or anything, take a little soft brush and scrub it. But um, it, it really is important to keep those clean. Then onto my desk, which has gotten very messy the past few weeks since this is where I spend most of my time. I started by taking everything off of my desk besides my computer and the mirror that's plugged in. Anything that didn't belong on my desk, I made sure to put back in its proper place. Then I just gave it a quick wipe down with some cleaner since there was a lot of dust that has accumulated. So I just wiped that down and I also wiped down the top of my mirror to get rid of that dust. Then I took some mirror cleaner and cleaned the mirror since it had some hairspray residue on it. Then I just wiped down my computer as well and then put everything back in its place and also made sure to wipe down my keyboard and mouse. I took everything out of the drawers and cleaned inside them. My desk has one big center drawer and two smaller ones on the side. In the big middle drawer though, I keep my everyday makeup, so there were some makeup stains and residue that needed to be wiped away, and also some powder that just really needed to be cleaned as well. So I figured since we're in quarantine and I haven't been wearing much makeup, there's no better time than now to wash my makeup brushes. So I asked Carolyn what she has found works best. What I found and we, what we've done at Good Housekeeping what's worked for me is just like you said, a little dish soap or a little shampoo. You can even use a little shampoo because what you want to do is just cut through the makeup that's in there. You know, wet the brush. Don't want to wet the handle, especially if it's a wooden handle. It's plastic is okay, but don't don't set, um, soak the handle. But So under the faucet, the running water, wet the brush. Um, in your hand, you can put a little soap um, and just rub the bristles around. Work it through the bristles. Kind of like you're washing your hair almost, you know, because that's what you're washing. Um, rinse it under the running faucet. I would say, you know, it's important to, depending on how often you use them, you could do it, you know. Um, you don't want to certainly put any bacteria or anything back on your face. So I would say, you know, every week or every few weeks, depending on um, what kind of makeup you use and how much you use them. While I wait for those to dry, I went back to my room and emptied my garbage can that was full. Then I moved on to my dresser and my bookshelf, which have kind of become the dumping ground for things I don't want to put away or don't know where to put them. 
So I took anything that didn't belong and put it where it should go. As you can see, there are some snacks because let's be honest, who hasn't been snacking a bunch in quarantine? So I put those back in the pantry where they belong. I threw out any garbage, mostly empty granola bar boxes, and anything that was on the surface that needed to go back, I put on my bed. Once everything was cleared off, I wiped down everything to get rid of any dust. I made sure to take out all of the bins in my bookshelf and get each shelf as well. Getting behind the TV was a bit hard, but I did the best that I could and I think I got everything. And then I just wiped the TV down as well. Once everything was cleaned, I put everything where it belonged. The bookshelf still needs to be organized, but we'll come back to that later. Since I live in an apartment, we have to break down any boxes before we take them down to the trash room in the basement. So I've actually been procrastinating that, so I've kind of collected a few boxes in my room. So I just broke those down and brought them down to the trash room along with any of the other garbage. Then it was time to vacuum. I made sure to get all of the visible space and also tried my best to get under any of the furniture that was kind of hard to see, such as under the bookshelf, under my dresser, and under the bottom end of my bed as well. And then I just gave it a quick mop to make sure everything was super clean. Now that everything's cleaned, it's time for organizing. First, I wanted to start by organizing the cords that are behind my bed. These have become a tangled mess and the power strip just flops all over and I wanted to do something about it. So I found this cord organizer on Amazon and put everything inside of there. First, I had to untangle all of the wires and that took some finagling, but I finally figured out the best way. Then I decided to take these Velcro command strips that are meant for picture frames, but I actually find are nice for holding some things down. So in case I do need to lift it up, I can just unvelcro it and revelcro it as needed, but it keeps it stuck and in place. I found that I had to tilt the power strip a little bit to get the top to stay flat since some of the plugs were too tall, but for the most part it worked really, really well. Then I needed to organize all of the storage bins that I bought to try to look more organized, but in the end it just kind of shoved everything in them randomly. So the wicker baskets on the right I keep in my closet and the white bins are kept on the bookshelf that's beside me as you can see. For the white bins, I knew I wanted to store my hair and makeup stuff so it was easily accessible. So one of the bins is dedicated to skincare, one is for hair products and miscellaneous things, and the other two I decided to use for my not so everyday makeup. My everyday makeup I actually keep at my desk because it's easier to reach for. As for my closet bins, there wasn't much rhyme or reason as to what kind of went into each bin. Some of the bins are easier to get to than others, so I kind of sorted it as things that I would reach for from most to least. One bin is kind of some extra beauty products and miscellaneous things. Another is a lot of the travel makeup bags that I have. One is for decorations that I actually need to hang up. And another is for all of my winter scarves, hats, gloves, and socks. Then it was time to organize the top half of my bookshelf. This has quickly become a dumping ground for everything, so I wanted to organize it to be practical but not look messy. On my shelf I just stacked some books that I have on the side, then because of quarantine and working from home I've been needing my camera bag a lot more often. Normally I keep this in my closet but since I've been reaching for it a lot more frequently I put it off to the side and just filled it with other random things that didn't really have a place. Then on top of the shelf, I have this empty vase that I actually need to fill, but for now it will just be empty. I moved some of the things that were on my desk onto this space to make it look pretty while also decluttering my desk at the same time. I also decided to hang my necklaces on my hook board. I actually haven't unwrapped my necklaces from when I moved a couple months ago, so it was nice to finally unwrap those. Then on the extra hook that I had, I just added my keys and I was done. And that's it. My room feels much cleaner and much more organized, and I don't feel as bad about spending as much time in here as I am. Just wanted to say a big thank you to Carolyn for all her tips and tricks, and I hope this video inspires you to clean your room or organize those spots that you've been putting off. Comment down below what you want to see us clean next or any cleaning questions that you may have. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to GH. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.